Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at the potential of the Colorado Avalanche grabbing, grabbing some Central Division rival superstars. According to a couple of reports out there, the Colorado Avalanche have been in the mix for Patrick Keane and Jonathan Taze. Is there any way that we could see both of those guys end up in Denver, Colorado? We're going to take a look at that today. So first off, uh, this sounds a little bit crazy. This is one of those rumors that we've heard rumors about Kane, and now we're hearing rumors about Taze going there. There's not enough money. You know, if we're going to be honest, if Colorado wanted to bring in these kind of players, they would have found a way to keep Nazem Kadri. I just don't see how that scenario would have worked. Now the thing is, if they send money to Chicago, which Chicago would be in desperate need of you know, trying to get to the cap floor, well, then maybe there's a way to get this done. So if you look at the Colorado Avalanche, we're going to start off there today. You have to look at the very near future where you have Nathan McKinnon, JT Comfer, Andrew Cogliano, and Eric Johnson come off the books next year. Those are their biggest, their biggest contracts coming off next season. So... Obviously, McKinnon is the most important of those, but the Colorado Avalanche are in a spot where they might be willing to trade some of those depth contracts in order to bring in these big guys, so that way, whatever is left of Patrick Kane and Taze's contract at the end of this year, along with Nathan McKinnon, they can go for it one run here. So that's where this does kind of actually work, and I'm going to try and get to this. So... Think of it this way. If you trade JT Koffer and his 3.5 and you trade Eric Johnson and his 6, I know, I know, you don't want to trade Eric Johnson, but we're trying to make this deal work. You have to find a little bit of a happy medium here. That's $9.5 million. That isn't even one of the Taze and Kane contracts, which combined between Kane and Taze is $21 million in cap space. So let's think of a hypothetical. The only way this works, you need another another team in this trade. You need to have somebody taking on that salary. So let's say 50% salary retention. It's 5.75 between the two of them, you know, for each of them. So now you're looking at $10.5 million. So now the gap is a little bit more feasible, and it's just a little under $2 million in cap space that you have to make ground on. So that is still possible at that point. That is a legit possibility. Again, it's still crazy, but is still possible. Now, you have to look at what the Avalanche would have to be willing to give away. So that means Eric Johnson's gone. That means JT Confer's gone. I think that's okay. But you have to be willing to give up prospects. Now, what do they really have left in the cupboard here? So Keaton Middleton, Jacob McDonald, Martin Kaut, uh, Jan Lou Fude, Mikhail Maltsev, that's kind of what you have left. Shane Bowers, that's kind of what they've got. Sampo Rata, those are kind of the guys that they have to potentially take. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Those guys are not going to get a Patrick Kane, Jonathan Tays trade done. So what could? What could get the deal done? Now, I know Avalanche fans aren't going to like this, but depends on what you think of Alexander Newhook. Are you willing to trade Newhook? Because I think Newhook would have to go in this trade. I don't like the idea of the Avalanche not only trading Alexander Newhook, but trading him in the division to the central division rival Colorado, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks. So I'm not a huge fan of this, but if you want to make that deal work, it would probably have to involve a couple of draft picks that Colorado does have. They do have their next three for three years of first round draft picks. They could get that deal done. And Alexander Newhook as law well, as well as like Sampo Rantel or Rempel. What's his name? Sampo Ranta. Uh, Oscar Olison, who is a pretty good draft pick, Martin Kaut. Shane Bowers, you can pick your poison of those guys. Mikhail Maltsev. So there could be a trade to be done here, but it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a third team involved, and it's going to take a 50% salary retention from Chicago, 
it's going to be a lot that has to happen here, but I think there is something to be done. And I think that, again, as crazy as this sounds, and again, when you look at it on paper, there's no way this could happen. There is a real possibility if they really want to make this work, if both sides really want something to get done, they could get it done. And if Chicago wants to make another run here, or Colorado wants to repeat as Stanley Cup champions, there is a pathway to do so. It's just going to cost them a, ha a very, very hefty fine, which could include some of their good prospects, as well as a really good, talented young player in Alex Turcott. Um, did I just say the wrong name? I did. Alex Newhook. It's going to cost them Alex Newhook. So let me know what you guys think down below. Is that too much of a price to pay? Do the Avalanche even want Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane? I think they want Patrick Kane, but is it worth it if it means Jonathan Taze as well? Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.